Hi guys, it's Lee here from Andertons, and uh, for this particular video, we're going to uh, have a look at some more of the amazing Gibson Collector's Choice Les Pauls. Uh, Rob is on Handycam at the moment. Yeah. Uh, whilst I am clutching um, the Ed King Collector's Choice. Now, the reason for doing this video is twofold. One is because Collector's Choice guitars are just awesome and we know you love them. Uh, but secondly is to promote a new way of listing these guitars on the Andertons website. In fact, a new way of listing a lot of guitars. Anytime we get anything remotely kind of posh or interesting, could be anything from a Les Paul standard really upwards. Um, we're now going to photograph each and every single guitar. We're going to weigh them photograph them from different angles, photograph serial numbers, um, and then list all these different photos, could be 10, 15, 20 photos even per guitar, including the weights, on our website. And then the cool thing is, you'll actually be able to choose the serial number of the exact model that you want, um, add that to your cart, and then you know that what you're gonna get in the post isn't just some random Les Paul standard, it's the exact one that you uh, saw in the shot. So. This is Collector's Choice. I forget which numero, I think it's number 16, but I'll just double check. 16, can you believe we've done 16 of these now? Uh, this is number 16, good memory. Okay, so this is the Red Eye. Uh, this is owned by uh, a guy called Ed King. Uh, if you don't know the whole vibe behind Collector's Choice yet, this is a real guitar. What does that mean? Of course it's a real guitar. No, what I mean is, genuinely, a chap called Ed King owns the original 1959 version of this Les Paul. He has kindly lent it to Gibson for uh, as long as they need it really so that they can run it through all kinds of x-ray machines and scanners and really understand um, the, the density of the timbers used, uh, the windings on the pickups and the magnets, uh, obviously aesthetically the type of burst that it has, the way it's worn. You can see on this one it's worn quite strangely. There's a sort of a bit of red over here and a That's probably where, where you hit an ex-girlfriend there. Quite, is that blood, do you think? Yeah, it's probably Possibly. definitely blood. It's probably where it's just, again, been sun damaged in a certain way. Perhaps his arm constantly covers that bit up. I don't really know. Um, but And then what they do is they create, if I spin it around the back, they create these just incredibly authentic reproductions of them. So all of the, the, the wear and the marks and the way the burst has faded weirdly and the weight of the guitar and the tone should be as close to the original as you can possibly get. Essentially, if you're a collector, this would be your choice. Um, and as you've seen on videos that we've done of these in the past, uh, what, when did we fall in love with Collector's Choice? Was it the Goldie? It was Collector's Choice number two, I think we played, and just went, these are amazing. Was that the Marsden one? No, way before that. Oh, this right. was, um, I forget the name of the collector, but um, it was just, you know, this is Gibson at its finest. This is the best luthiers using the best materials, doing very limited runs, taking as long as need be to make these guitars. And uh, these are superb Les Pauls. I actually kind of think, I'm sure collectors do buy these, but I hope players buy them predominantly because as a player's guitar, these are just stupendous. <laughs>
Um, Good to see you all, haven't we? We've got three. So you get these nice little leather wallets as well as the beautiful case and sort of case candy that with it. Uh, Ed King, in case you're wondering, has had an illustrious guitar career, um, including being a member of Leonard Skinner and co-writing Sweet Home Alabama. So if he doesn't know a good Les Paul when he sees one, nobody will. Lee, how is it possible that we didn't know who he was when he'd co-written Sweet Home Alabama? There's loads of guys. <laughs> I mean, I, let me, let's think of another one. Who, let's, let's think of another amazing tune that we, I bet no one knows who wrote. I can't think of anything on the spot. Let's edit this bit out of the video. Um, <laughs> what's it? <laughs> and do you know Bram what? Jam, Black Betty, who's a guitar player? I have no idea. Either way, great track. Great track. Bow, bow. Bam, 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 probably bam. this guy. Yeah, probably. Anyway, so um, we're going to intersperse this video with some playing of Rob and I using one of these three guitars. But that's uh, that's collector's choice number 16, Ed King. I'm going to go and get another one. OK, another beautiful Gibson collector's choice here. This is number 15, owned by a guy called Greg Martin, uh, another uh, professional guitar player. Um, played in a band, or is playing in a band, called the Kentucky Headhunters. This is actually a 58 Les Paul. Um, this is probably my favourite colour of Les Paul, that kind of lemon bursty kind of colour. That is um, absolutely stunning and the tastiest of the yeah. ones that we've seen uh, in a long time. So yes. probably a slightly more subtle flame um, on, on the 58, which, which I think is pretty normal for 58. So it's, it's 59 to the ones you sort of associate the, the phenomenal flames on. But again, look at all the kind of crazy paving. I hope you can see that in the light, but all super authentically what, done. What I'll do is I'll move it until I can. There you go. So look at the crazy paving on here. It's just incredible. I'm going to spin this around a bit more. Look at the wear as well, all lovingly kind of recreated as best they possibly That's can. That's where his armpit shaved away for yeah. years. <laughs> um, Clearly, at some point in its life, uh, this bridge saved him from a buckshot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or a million knife wounds. <laughs> million knife wounds. But I must admit that the crazy paving on the front here is just stunning. So we're going to have a little bit of a play on that. We love this. Again, if you want to see super, super high res close-up photos of any of the guitars we're doing here, just hit the Anderson's website. You can choose exactly which serial number you want to look at, find out how much it weighs, all that kind of stuff. So that's the Greg Martin. That's number 15. There's one more. This is uh, this particular collector's choice is owned by a guy called Gordon Kennedy. He's owned this guitar. It's a 1959 Les Paul since 1993. And for some reason, it comes... In a love sock. In a love sock, like this. Which um, allegedly is to do with its uh, original ownership. So this, this was originally um, owned, or certainly has been owned, by a guitar player called John Sebastian. Uh, so from uh, a band called The Lovin' Spoonfuls. Oh, I know about them. My well, dad had all the violins. I'm not terribly familiar with their work, um, but uh, apparently their sh uh, hit songs include Do You Believe in Magic, which I thought was a take that number. Maybe they covered it. Um, <laughs> do you no, there probably wasn't. There's a bad joke. Um, uh, Nashville Cats and Welcome Back. Jimmy Vivino, I know of Mike Bloomfield, tragically not with us anymore, but one of the best blues guitarists of his time. So let's have a look inside uh, this. Oh, magic sock of 60s love. Yield to us your goodness. Oh, look at that. That's really different. Oh, it's, it's getting caught on the machine heads. Oh. Comes with a lot of little bits of, paper. Bits of string yeah. that we like to put on guitars so that people know look how much that. they cost. Another really lovely, like a honey burst, this one, isn't it? Oh, another super sexy. Now, 
What's all this? Well, it's like... Um, what did he do? He had a kitten and it, it got stuck, maybe. I'd something. love to know the story behind how that all happened, because that is not normal wear and tear. I reckon he has his pick in his hand or he's using... Um, what do you call it when you've got country picks on the fingers? What, finger picks? Yeah. Maybe, or, yeah. or maybe m maybe there's some tragic accident, you know, and it's some four-year-old child went, Daddy, look what I've done to your guitar! At the point just before you kill them. <laughs> um, that, if you look carefully, that's uh, definitely Spain, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to work, on, on tour, clearly working his way out. Yeah, that's it, absolutely. Way to get to. This is England, roughly, no, 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 isn't that's it? Italy, that's Malta, just there. Oh, yeah, it could yeah, be, yeah. couldn't it? Yeah, you can see the boot there. Yeah. That won't be what they are, but there we are. Um, so there like, we are. I do like that. That's nice. It's just, it's kind of, you just pick it up and you go, oh yes, I've played this for 50 years, no problem at all. So there we go, which I can't remember which collector's choice this is. What number is it? I think it's number 13. <laughs> Before we sign out, yet again, I reaffirm my love of Gibson Custom Shop guitars. It's just a shame that they have to be so expensive, but then there are some things in life that you've just got to make a sacrifice for. Yeah. And I think these are one of those things. True. So I'm going to sacrifice you. Is that okay? It's fine. It's fine. No problem, mate. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>